All right. It is a ex-banker kind of day today. Up next, we have actually a recovering uh, investment banker. Uh, you know, don't hold it against him. He, he is in recovery here. And, you know, again, I'm glad that we have so many people who worked in the traditional finance industry on Wall Street, uh, like our next speaker did. He was on Wall Street for 15 years, an investment banker for 10 years. These people coming over to Bitcoin and processing their recovery with us, I think is very powerful. And they have a lot, a lot to bring to the Bitcoin space. So next up, we have Kyle Fry. He's going to talk about Bitcoin in capital markets. Please give Kyle a warm welcome to the stage. Hello, um, I'm Kyle Fry, CEO of Digital Markets. I think based on a lot of the conversations I've had and a lot of the, uh, the thinking of this community, I think it's important to start by what do I mean by Bitcoin capital markets. They're very different, but they're very important together. Okay, so to be clear, Bitcoin is freedom. Bitcoin is money. Bitcoin should not be regulated. Capital markets, however, as the definition would suggest, is a market where capital is allocated to those people that need capital. Um, capital markets will need rules. Um, there are ways we can start to move capital markets closer to uh, how we perceive Bitcoin and what Bitcoin is doing. There's two, two pieces of this. One is thank you to everyone that has moved Bitcoin forward with adoption, Lightning Network, etc. Our way to help support hyper-Bitcoinization is going to be through capital markets. And I'm going to show you what that means. So I had a lot of debate on this slide, honestly. Bitcoin may be the greatest innovation in human history. I had is before and someone came up to me and said, but what about the internet, Kyle? And I was like, okay. And then somebody else came up and said, what about fire? I was like, okay, you got me. Like fire, Bitcoin, internet, they're somewhere up there. Um, but obviously a great innovation, uh, freedom, self sovereignty money, global access, nobody can take it down, self-custody is the right movement for money. And let's be clear, I'm gonna talk about how everyone here in the Bitcoin community is focused on money, but I think there's, a, there's also a bigger picture here. Bitcoin is sound money. I think most of you in the room could probably uh, define that better than me, but that means unit of account, media of an exchange, et cetera, et cetera, self-sovereign, let's send it without banks. No intermediaries, total freedom, okay? And that's the new gold, that's the new USD, that's the new fiat currency on a global basis for everyone on the planet. Um, this is where I'm going to start talking about, where Bitcoin enables sound assets. So what do I mean by that? There's sort of two-prong approach how capital markets activity can support Bitcoin and how Bitcoin can support capital markets activity. One is, uh, how is that capital allocated? What is capital? Capital is money. If money is Bitcoin, therefore Bitcoin is the capital to support entrepreneurs, innovation, real estate, etc all the entire capital markets activity. The other piece is, if we start to gain the benefits of digitization of assets, the great things about what blockchain could do, and we can tokenize, the actual transactions at which uh, assets are bought and sold will be paid in Bitcoin. So all of this activity in the capital markets can actually increase uh, the activity and, and adoption of Bitcoin. And we'll talk about that in a bit. And actually, a key point here is, if people don't understand Bitcoin, and 99% of the planet still thinks magic internet money, what better way to talk to them but assets, things they actually understand, and shift them that way from the tokenization of assets. Um, there's a lot to go through here. So I think most of you have seen the slide in at least a thousand different ways, but I wanna focus on the blue bar. Okay, gold, $10 trillion, 10 times that. Global money supply, $100 trillion. This has been the focus and talk of Bitcoin. We, digital, our focus is on all global financial assets, over 10x the times of the global money supply. Quadrillions. How often do you even use that word? Um, two significant challenges we've come up against that we've spent over five years and over $10 million trying to solve it and figure out. The first is the lack of access to global capital markets. The reality of it is global market access provides a pathway to wealth. I'd like to think that you can just hodl, but that is not the only solution to Bitcoin. Um, 
There are other ways to invest. There's risk tolerance, there are entrepreneurs, there are people building great businesses that create securities and equity that must get funding. Uh, this supports that innovation. The reality of it is 90% of the world can't access the global markets. There are securities rules, there are market hours, there's legacy infrastructure, there's a ton of bloated costs, there's a ton of intermediaries. There's absolutely a better way. Digitization is that way, and Bitcoin can be the foundation of the monetary layer for those global markets. The second uh, thing we run up against is right now what you want does not matter. More than 90% of people have zero effect on government. Now, I think the study was done in a US context, but I think we can all agree as a voter in any country, in any context, you have limited ability of what that vote actually does to impact policy. So I'll read this quote and then I'll, I'll shorten it for you because it's a lot of just words. Uh, the preferences of the average citizen appear to have only a minuscule near zero statistically non-significant impact upon public policy. You'll probably have to read that three times uh, to figure out what it means. Basically saying your vote doesn't matter. Period, full stop. The people with the money can do that. So, what does that mean? The enemy is exclusion. Exclusion from global markets and exclusion from the ability to shape the place you live uh, and what your vote means. What's the solution? The solution is access. How can we give people more access to things? And Bitcoin's going to do that, be a monster part of that, but the reality of it is the global markets is going to be another piece. Um, so. There's a huge social impact element to what we're doing, okay? I left Wall Street to join this movement to do something bigger. This is my purpose. If this is all I do the rest of my life, uh, when I die a uh, 130-year-old, then I'm, I'm, I'm fine. So uh, our massive transformative purpose is to alleviate suffering and expand human potential to enable meaningful living for every person on the planet. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that providing these two solutions, which exist today, right now. The new capital markets, as we digitize this, anyone can access the world. So two things are happening. One is we want to allow global access from anyone, every country, to access the capital markets to invest. The second piece is we want to make it much easier to lower the cost of capital such that anyone in the world can raise capital compliantly from their community, from people that matter. Um, and this idea of voting, you can vote. Vote with your dollars. Where you put your money matters. That's how you can actually shape the world way better than you can politically. Um, this is a little bit of the how, and I think these are old slides, by the way, so I'm just going to move on here. Um, the value layers, I'm not going to spend a ton of time here, but when you think about what we're building, what we've connected, there's three value layers. The top one are the issuers of capital and the receivers of that capital. Investors and issuers, that's sort of the business line. Then you have market rules. I used to call this regulation. That's a bad word now. I'll get into that in a second. And then there's the technology that connects it all. We touch on all three of these, and we've been able to connect a global infrastructure to facilitate full-on global retail investor access to the world. Um, here's a bit about our inf infrastructure. Um, on the issuer side, the investor side, we do touch both sides of the marketplace because it's critical to show them the right path and to lower the cost of capital globally. We use stock exchanges to facilitate this activity. Um, let me skip that one. So today, we are the only platform in the world with truly global access. Any asset class, any investor type, anywhere, anytime. The anytime is coming. Our, our stock exchange actually trades for, for 20 hours a day. Not quite 24, we'll get there. Just for example, NASDAQ trades six and a half hours. A bunch of highlights that we have. We've been at this for years. We've made a lot of mistakes. We've spent money. We've figured out there are pieces of the infrastructure you need. We've figured out pieces of the infrastructure you don't need and where to press and where technology can come in and actually start to change what's there. So today we actually have um, these listings live. Um, the Blockstream mining note built by Blockstream is fractionalized Bitcoin hash rate on liquid. Liquid is the side chain of Bitcoin purpose built for capital market securities activity. Um, another one we have is insider portfolio. We have a, a, a relationship with Jamie Rogozinski and the Wall Street Bets crew. Um, we created a, a ticker INSDR insider that tracks Nancy Pelosi's public shareholdings. Um, 
MicroStrategy, what better person to, to copy than, than uh, Mr. Saylor and, and what he does and believe in Bitcoin. So this is just the beginning. The idea here is to create a platform where anyone in the world can go to and invest in venture, real estate, digital assets, NASDAQ stocks, et cetera, et cetera. And we're all working at the same uh, global marketplace. And you can fund your account with Bitcoin. Um, and eventually, you know, our markets are denominated in USD today. That's just how it has to be for now. We want to denominate it in Bitcoin. We will want to ultimately settle transactions on chain. There's a lot we want to do on the Bitcoin context. So I think that um, this page is important to continue to show this idea of hyper Bitcoinization. You've got 21 million Bitcoin ever, the gold, right, where it's the, it's the fixed supply and of, of amount. Lightning is doing amazing things to create more of the sound money side of it. Let's use it as transactions and payments. Digital with liquid network is pushing to create uh, the, vert the cycle whereby, as I mentioned, Bitcoin is used to invest in the capital markets. And these all feed off of each other, increasing adoption, increasing activity. Let me try the back button here. So I think it's missing a slide I had on regulation. I think it's important to address this head on, is that regulation is not needed or desired or wanted for Bitcoin, okay? We don't need more humans making decisions. The reality of it is that equities, securities, real estate, and assets do need some investor protections. We call these market rules. Today, those market rules exist based on a global standards of a bunch of stock exchanges around the world that agree on certain investor protections. These, over time, will shift from humans and overall frameworks embedded into code. So again, the point is relying less on humans' ability to make decisions. Um, let's see if this last page works here. So what are we doing? We're calling Bitcoiners to come and join. And again, I, I, and I, I'm happy to have a conversation with anyone here. I don't think full out hodling is the plan. Uh, as we move it to money, the best thing you could do is get involved. Invest in Bitcoin companies. Uh, diversify your assets. We tokenize, so we have a deep strategic relationship with the folks at Blockstream who have done a lot for the Bitcoin space. Uh, Blockstream AMP and Liquid Network are the technological tools we use, purpose built for securities trading and enhancement. As I mentioned, we have uh, a strategic exclusive partnership and relationship with Wall Street Bets. Uh, that community absolutely stands for what we believe in. Bootstrapped, community driven, and give the people what they want. Power to the people. Wall Street Bets community has proved that over time. Lightning Ventures, uh, Mike Jarmuz or Muzz, um, has gone really deep in our business. We've made his head spin, but he loves what we're doing, and we love what he's doing to kind of bring this all together as well. And OpenXO. OpenXO is led by a gentleman named Salim Ismail, who knows Peter Diamandas. He has connections to the x Prowse Foundation. This entire ecosystem is about building an innovation and making the world a better place. Them plugging into us will facilitate the capital activity to allow all of these inner innovators and entrepreneurs to move forward. So we have, uh, we have a workshop later at 11.45. It's in about, I don't know, 45 minutes or half an hour down in the digital room. Would love to continue the conversation and talk to you guys more about how capital markets and hyper-Bitcoinization will happen from a lot of the work we're doing and we've been doing over the years. And that will be another attack vector on how we can move Bitcoin adoption forward. Thank you.